Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, scientists may have figured out how to end gray hair. Tony Kornheiser, hey scientists, Wilbon and I have a bigger problem than that, okay? Let's go, boys. Priorities. Priorities, huh? See, you know, you know, you think what? of it as a problem. I wouldn't have here. I told you, if I had known the reaction from a certain segment of society to a shaved head, I would have started shaving mine at 14 when I had a giant afro. I ain't looking for hair, dude. That's some other people's issues, not mine. Okay, scientists, forget about him. Work on me. <laughs> Priorities, boys. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, LeBron bullies Dylan Brooks. The Maple Leafs get an improbable win, and Wander Franco makes a memorable catch. But we begin today with Jimmy Butler scoring 56 points, tied for the fourth highest playoff total ever, as Miami came back against Milwaukee and took a 3-1 to one lead in that series. Giannis Antetokounmpo played 38 minutes. He had 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 13 assists. So Milwaukee was at full strength. Wilbon, what are your thoughts on Jimmy Butler's performance? And, Tony, don't forget, Brooke Lopez also had, like, one of his great career games ever. But we start with Jimmy Butler because I think I texted you knowing you had been asleep at least three hours, telling you that you were missing. In real time, I said this to you, one of you the did. great playoff performances of all time. Look, in the last 44 years, I have, and I know you have because we shared that responsibility with the Washington Post for a lot of years, We've seen all of the great performances in the NBA, and most of them, one of us, if not both of us, were there in person at courtside. Tony, this was up there. The only person that I'm willing to put this with is Michael Jordan. It had tones, overtones of that. And, of course, I think Magic's game in Philadelphia in the finals when he was a rookie, that's my greatest game of all time. And there are Bird games and Dominique games and Kobe games and LeBron games. and There's all that. This was that great. And, and, and Giannis and Brooke Lopez are in the middle of having great games. And Jimmy Butler was hurting. I mean, he had taken the tailbone fall and was limping around for a couple of days between games. This is an all-time, all-time game. As great as anything that I have seen. And I'm like, wow, how do you get better from that in these playoffs? This is still a first round. Yeah, so... I don't know what the phrase is. Is it to get out ahead of your skis or get over your skis? I don't want to do that. We both sat here yesterday. We both said it was not a must win for Milwaukee. That's we right. We both That's said right. Milwaukee could come back from 3-1. And, and they we can. both said Miami had injury problems, missing Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo. Right? So I, I don't want to make more of it than it was. What it was was Miami won a first-round game at home, which is something I think they're supposed to do. Jimmy Butler, though, comes back. He's down 11. His team is down 11 with eight minutes to go. And he then scores 22 points. He yeah. personally outscores Milwaukee 22 to 16. Now, he has been a really good player for quite a while. Eric Spolster has been a really good coach for quite a while. You know, Milwaukee, not Miami is a quality team. I don't know if it's a one-off, Mike, because the rest of the starters on Miami only had 31 points, so I don't know. But yes, it is a great performance. What it means down the road, I'm not certain of. Tony, I don't know what it means down the road, and that's why I'm isolating it, because I don't even, I'm comparing it to otherworldly things I have seen. I, I don't care about yeah. the significance of the game. I mean, it does put them up 3-1. But, Tony, you know for me to put something in the same sentence as Michael Jordan. For me, all right? That, that, I mean, I, don't, I can't go any higher. I mean, I was a little, little kid and saw some great games from Wilt and Jerry West. I was a little, little kid, and they're, they're on that list, too. But 50, come on now, 56, that, man, wow. Mm. Yeah. Meanwhile, LeBron James also had an epic game last night, one to remember. 22 points, 20 boards, seven dimes, two blocks, in an overtime win over the Grizzlies to give the Lakers a 3-1 series lead. LeBron capped the performance by taking the man who called them old, Tony's boy Dylan Brooks, to the hole, yeah, my boy. scoring, my boy. count the basket, go to the line, and won. Tony, what did that play tell you about each player? What did it tell you about each team? 
Okay, so first of all, it's karma. Because Dylan Brooks was opening his fat yap about how old LeBron was. And LeBron is old. He's 38. He's old in the NBA. But LeBron's eyes lit up when Dylan Brooks came out to guard him late in that circumstance. And he drove right by him. And he got the basket that is the game-clinching basket. You don't think he knew who was guarding him? Because I actually think he knew. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I want to refer to notes so. for a second. It's also karma because I felt and said this yesterday that Brooks should have been suspended for this game because of what he had done in the previous game. We took a crotch shot at LeBron. And also, he'd been, he'd been just raising the temperature of the series. I felt unnecessarily. LeBron got 20 and 20, Mike. I was amazed to hear this. It was the first time in his career. Almost 1,700 NBA games, 20 and 20. You don't think he knew who he was playing against last night? Come on. I, I, Tony, I do. Of course he did. The, 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 the greats take it personally. People say, I'm not taking it personally. Yeah, you are taking it personally. Look, look. For LeBron to have that game at, you know, 200 years old, He's the best player on the court in a series with other great players, some of them under 25. I mean, it's, un look, it's unbelievable that he could, could outthink everybody, outwork everybody, go to the spots he wants, get the results he wants. He got very little help offensively from Anthony Davis, even though he got some rebounding and, and defensive help, block shot, even of John Morant. But with, for LeBron to take those two charges from John Morant, and then afterwards say, I know I can't meet him up here anymore. I got I to gotta be low and get him as he takes off. It just tells you about the consciousness that LeBron has about everything going on on the court. It, it was amazing, Tony. And let me just say this about Memphis. They still don't have the maturity to cash in. They don't. There's an immaturity. There's a greatness physically. They have physicality. They are bold. They are fearless. They are even perhaps courageous. Perhaps that word is usable. Certainly it is for John Morant. But they're immature. They still do dumb stuff. I'm not sure about their plan and then their execution of it. And they're not ready to beat the Lakers yet, even though they may be physically more talented. Yeah. And LeBron's the reason. Yeah. He's the difference. Okay, so I wouldn't use the word courageous because they weren't even courageous enough, John Morant and Dylan Brooks, to meet the media after the game. No, well, they're not which is that. Something they don't that have the any NBA character. insists. That's character. Right? They don't and seem I to think have much somebody of that. on that team, I think somebody on that team in the upper echelon of that team has asked themselves this question: Do we think it's a wise investment to move forward for years and years with these two particular players? I told you a couple of weeks ago that I thought the Lakers would win because I didn't like the way Memphis was coming into this thing with the stuff I had read about John right. Morant's behavioral issues. So I think that's what we're. I think that's what we're. Well, seeing they're not getting now. rid we of John. Those two guys, it won't be no. John Morant. No, no, no of course not. We know the no, other no, no. guys leaving. And by the way, physical courage and character are two different things. I haven't seen much evidence of character necessarily from the Memphis Grizzlies. We move now to hockey and a tremendous comeback by the Maple Leafs on the road in Tampa against a team that has won two Stanley Cups in the last three years, a team I believe, Wilbon, you picked to win last night. The yep. Lightning was ahead 4-1 to one with 10 minutes to go in the game. Let me repeat that, 4-1. to one. The Leafs tied it in regulation, won it in overtime. So do you come to praise the Leafs or rip the Lightning? Praise the Leafs, Tony. Praise the Leafs. Come on, you're down at a recent champion. What, champion once removed, you're down again? You were just down the previous game. You're not coming back. You know what I mean? You're just not coming back in this game. And they did all the things they had to do to beat a great goal to this. 4-1, I click away to go to something else. And I go, I, I go back, and it's 4-2. It's and I'm like, okay, let me, let me stay with this a little longer. And they do the thing that you have to do, which is get people to the front of the net the deflections, the tip-ins, I mean, I, 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 it, it's amazing what Toronto is able to do in a short span of time. In both games, in an eight- to ten-minute stretch on the road in Toronto, which always seems to cave. Their own fan base. I told you I've been in Toronto a lot the last few years, and people were just like, you know, we root for you, we love you, we're tired of you, you never come through. They're coming through. They're coming through against a big-time opponent on the road, a recent champion. Wow, good for them. Yeah. I come to praise them. 
Yeah, so as Yogi said, this is deja vu all over again. We did this yesterday with the Oilers and the Kings. Yeah. The yeah. Kings had a 3 nothing lead and then a 4-3 lead, and they lost the game. And I buried the Kings, and you praised the Oilers. And we're in the same situation again today. And God bless you because you are praising the Leafs. And I'm going to bury the other team. Because this is 4-1 with 10 minutes to go. 4 to one, it's a gag job it's over. of all time by it's Tampa over. where they play that stupid foghorn wh whenever they score. And, and you say, you, and now you're praising the Leafs. Here's why I don't want yeah. you to get carried away. They have not won a playoff series since 2004, I believe. The last six years in a row, they have lost each first round series they are in, including last year to Tampa when they were up 2-1, I believe, and 3-2. And 3-2. And 3-2. Toronto yeah. has lost 10 straight potential playoff clinching series games. So Tampa's not out of it. Not even a 3-1. They're not but out of it. But there's only, there's only one way for you to break that curse. There's only one way to break through. Yeah. When you win yeah. games well, like last yet. night on the road. Look, right. if Toronto can't hold on to this... Then people up there, people up north in the great north can really say we're done. I think they're going to win this time. I do. Well, you were wrong yesterday. Let's take a break. Coming up, the Rockets are reportedly hiring Ime Udoka to be their next head coach. What's the word for that? And how best to describe the catch that Wander Franco made last night. Man, that was a rousing victory by Toronto last night. And no, I did not expect it. I thought Tim introduced. Time to have words with Wilbon. Let's get the first one from the producer over the loudspeaker. Ime Udoka is a blank hire by the Rockets. I'm going to say it's a curious hire. First of all, because when the Raptors fired Nick Nurse, everybody said Udoka was going to go there. Second of all, because the truth is there's a cloud over him at the moment. The Celtics cut ties with him because of inappropriate conduct. Is, but to me it's conflicting because it's Houston. Because of Deshaun Watson and the alleged sexual misconduct that he was accused of by so many people. That's right there in Houston where I'm sure there's got to be a certain emotional feeling from at least a segment, perhaps a large one, of the population, that some of whom were happy to say goodbye to Deshaun Watson and his $230 million guaranteed in Cleveland, and now you got Yudoka coming in, who, as a basketball coach, has a reputation of being able to reach young players and get to them and pull out the best in performance, but also has the cloud that you were speaking of so conflicting. Yeah. Hard to escape it. Okay. What's next? Wander Franco's catch was blank. It was wonderful. Do you see what I did there? That's like when Rory talks about the driver. What does Rory say? Says it has forgiveness. And Tiger says, I'm hearing far, whatever, I'm hearing far. Um, look, it's a lovely catch. And it gives us a chance to look at what the Tampa Bay team is stepping in lately. They're 19 and 3. Mike, it's the second greatest start of all time, only in like in 120 years. There's the 1911 Tigers and the 1955 Brooklyn Dodgers who did better. And the Dodgers won the World Series for their only World Series win as the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, Tampa's been great. Oddly enough, they've only had four games against teams with records better than 500, but one of them was last night against Houston. You know, they're the World Series champs. So. By the way, they've won a game apparently you since you started talking because they're twenty and three. Don't cheat them oh, out of okay. a win, Tony. My word is sh my word is show off, and I'm not saying that to be critical of Wander Franco. I'm just saying, look, Tony, he's a phenom. He was signed at 16 years old. He was third in Rookie of the Year voting, which you can say, okay, he didn't win Rookie of the Year, but he's been hurt, and people still recognize the talent. He's have something having something of a breakout season now, as the club does. He's hitting 318 with a bunch of extra base hits. So, but he's got that kind of talent where he's so good, he may not need a glove to play the position any time <laughs> in the game. He's that talented. I mean, he's just one of those players that people see at 16 in the Dominican Republic and say, give me him. 
That's Franco so far. That's the final word. Let's take one last break. Still to come, more bad news for Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Uh-oh. And does Kale McCarr deserve a suspension for the hit he dished out last night? Good hockey night, does too. Your driver, good ball night. Does your driver have forgiveness? Do you have forgiveness in your driver? Uh, you? Not in about 10 years, no. Right, no. I can't hit it 100. Happy time, people. Happy 32nd birthday, Jordan Poyer. The Bills' safety made the Pro Bowl in 2022 after being first-team All-Pro in 2021. When Poyer got... ...from Buffalo to Kansas City to play every defensive snap, when doctors... ...elbow, foot, and rib injuries. Poyer drove. He drove 15 hours from Buffalo to Kansas City to play every defensive let him fly because of a collapsed lung. Since joining Buffalo as a free agent in 2016, Poyer has the sixth most interceptions, 22, and the 10th most tackles, 400. He recently signed a two-year extension in Buffalo where the defensive backfield will be very much in the news if fellow safety DeMar Hamlin attempts a comeback. You think Poyer's popular? His wife, Rachel, has... 4.2 million followers on Instagram. I know you are not an Instagram guy. Poyer, an NFL player, has less than 10% of her following. I'm just saying. I have zero followers. So what? Well, you should get Happy some. Happy anniversary, Trey Turner. I want robots to follow me. On this day six years ago, <laughs> Turner hit for his first cycle and drove in a then career-high seven runs helping the Washington Nationals beat Colorado 15-12. At that time, Turner at short and Bryce Harper in the outfield were the young, promising position players on the Nats. Now, much to my chagrin, they are again teammates, but this time on the Phillies. And Turner has hit two more cycles and upped his one-game RBI total to eight. Turner signed an 11-year, $300 million contract with Philadelphia, and Harper said, quote, every time I'd see him at shortstop, I'd mess with him and say, you'd look great in a Phillies uniform. I know you can't let go of Trey Turner. Isn't Juan Soto better than Trey Turner and Bryce Harper? Isn't Juan Soto? Juan Soto delivered, Not baby. this year. I, I, Not I this year. I don't crying over him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not this year. No, well, he's not better. He's not no, a national not, this year. Went, since he went, since he left Washington, he hasn't been nearly as good as he was in Washington. I believe okay. someone can get in my ear on that. Happy trails to game five for Kawhi Leonard. The Clippers have ruled out their great star out of game five tonight at Phoenix because of continuing problems with his right knee. Leonard has not played since game two, and Phoenix now leads the series three to one. In the two games Leonard played, he averaged 34.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, and six assists. Clippers coach Tyron Liu said, quote, we're not talking about he's sitting out because of load management or he's tired or nothing like that. This is an actual thing, unquote. The Clippers' other star, Paul George, has missed the entire series with a knee sprain as well. You know what they say, Mike, the greatest ability is availability. Yeah, and you know what, Tony? It hurts when that availability is compromised by real injury. And going back to 2019, I would say on this show several times, I'm there. People only watch highlights and clips now. I watch the damn games. You could see Kawhi Leonard dragging that leg. That's, that is a thing. And he's done that in other games, even when he's been great. And so people should actually watch that and not just the highlight package. And they might understand it's not rest. He's hurt. And I wonder how long he can play. And I hope he can get past this and have a longer career. But you don't know. Two omissions. Kings guard De'Aaron Fox, who you love, said today he is 99 to 100 percent playing in tomorrow's game playing. five. And Juan Soto this year is batting 198. You like that okay. big boy? 198. Stop. He did okay Let's for your the people, big finish. Did. For your net. Kale McCarr did great. Kale McCarr, yeah. the Avalanche, suspended one game after his hit sideline crack and leading scorer, Jared McCann. Your thoughts? Yeah, McCann's out for game five, but McCarr, he's not known. He has no reputation as being the dirty player. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite for him. Norris and Con Smythe winner last year. 18 Colorado football players entered the transfer portal. 
after the spring game under Dion. What do you make of that? I make of it that Dion doesn't want any of them. Maybe Matt Rule wants them. 31 are in the portal. <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur players will refund fans who travel to their 6-1 road loss at Newcastle on Sunday. You impressed? I don't believe for a minute that the players are giving that money back. And I got some purple jerseys for anybody who wants to leave Dion and come to Evanston, Illinois. Kings and Oilers, pivotal game five tonight. Who you got? It's hard to go against McDavid and Dreisaitl. The last one, Celtics and Nuggets can advance tonight, will they? Both in blowouts, yes. We're out of time. Try and do better the next time, and I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the Apple Apple Podcast. Hey, Lakers, leave D'Angelo Russell alone. Let him drink that Coco 5. D'Angelo, I'll send you a case of Coco 5. And now, send me potato chips. <laughs>